On this channel, we've discussed quite a lot of different mysteries in the galaxy, in the Milky Way, outside of the galaxy, and basically in a lot of different areas of the universe. Some of these mysteries are still obviously unexplained, but in many cases, scientists have been slowly inching toward a possible solution. But the thing is, even right here, in our own solar system, there are some really intriguing mysteries that even right now nobody can explain. Obviously, the most famous one is the hypothetical Planet 9, or at least the unusual gravitational effects detected in a lot of distant objects. But today we're going to be discussing a slightly different mystery that's actually based on a very intriguing hypothesis. Something that the scientists discussed approximately one decade ago, and something that did actually have a somewhat unusual explanation that not a lot of scientists accepted. But in this new study, the explanation actually becomes a lot more intriguing and actually based on some really solid science. And so, hello info person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing this unusual mystery of our solar system known as the Kudo Hypothesis. Kudo Hypothesis? I'm not sure. Basically, compact ultra-dense objects present in the solar system. And first, let me actually explain to you where all of this kind of started. I mean, technically it started with a lot of other studies, but the biggest discovery was with this asteroid you see behind me. This is the asteroid known as Polyhymnia. Technically, I guess, 33 Polyhymnia, because this is the 33rd asteroid discovered back in 1854. The asteroid that was actually known because it had a very strangely eccentric orbit with the eccentricity of about 0.34 and also an unusual resonance connected to Jupiter. For every 9 orbits of Jupiter, this asteroid orbited 22 times. And just like a lot of other asteroids in the asteroid belt, this one was also studied using radar, it was also studied by observing gravitational interactions with the objects nearby, and over time the scientists worked out its overall size and its overall mass. It seems to be approximately 54 kilometers or 34 miles in diameter, so I guess pretty large, but strangely enough, it seems to have a relatively large mass, approximately 6.2 times 10 to the power of 18 kilograms. And the reason this is strange is, well, it makes the density of this asteroid ridiculously high. It basically makes the density approximately 75 gram per centimeter cube, 15 times higher than planet Earth, and more intriguingly, higher than the densest material on planet Earth, the material known as osmium. The density for osmium is approximately 3 times lower, and this of course has no physical explanation. An asteroid with a small size, but relatively high mass, just doesn't really make sense. Although here, I guess a quick side note. A very important side note. Many of these observations were only based on measuring the gravitational influence on other bodies, which means that there is a possibility it might not have been very accurate. Mostly because this asteroid is much smaller than a lot of other ones nearby. And since early 2000s, no other attempts have been made to try to measure the mass of this asteroid. And so maybe, just maybe, the calculations were just wrong. But assuming that they're not, this essentially created this unusual hypothesis. The idea behind these very dense objects, or compact ultra-dense objects, that seem to exist in the solar system and seem to kind of contradict a lot of other assumptions. And there are some other papers that you can find in the description below that do go through some additional potential discoveries, including various comets, such as for example the 2011 comet known as Lovejoy, that surprisingly did not fall apart when it was very close to the Sun, once again assuming potentially high density. And actually this hypothesis goes even further. It even suggests that certain unexplained craters on planet Earth might have been formed by these somewhat small but somewhat massive objects. As a matter of fact, this hypothesis even suggests that the Tunguska event might have been caused by one of these objects. Essentially, ultra-dense but somewhat small objects containing much more mass than they should contain on the inside. But a lot of initial explanations in regards to what makes these objects so much denser than anything else were maybe not too convincing. For example, a lot of them seem to suggest that maybe this is some kind of a unusual dark matter. Or to be more specific, it suggested that maybe there is a bunch of dark matter hiding inside of these asteroids, dramatically increasing their mass and of course their density. And so by discovering these asteroids and potentially discovering collisions with these asteroids, we might be able to solve the mystery of dark matter. Okay, Anton, is this going to be another dark matter video, is what you're probably asking. No, it's not. It's really not. It's actually something much cooler. Turns out that maybe dark matter is not the best explanation. As a matter of fact, it might be one of the worst explanations, because the new explanation kind of makes sense. So here's what a new paper from just a few days ago proposes instead. Instead of some hypothetical physics, 
it goes into the periodic table of elements. Ironically, focusing on the concept that's sometimes referred to as an obtainium. Basically, a type of an element that's extremely difficult to create or to obtain, and basically involving elements that are much higher in the periodic table. But turns out that even though we currently have 118 known chemical elements, with all of the higher elements essentially being extremely unstable and almost impossible to create on Earth, there are mathematical theories that propose a kind of a stability island that happens much, much higher up the list. Certain super heavy elements, much higher in the periodic table, are predicted to exist not just for a few milliseconds, but possibly become stable and possibly create materials in a similar way that we actually have materials that we're used to right here on planet Earth. And specifically here, there is a theoretical region around the atomic number 164 where this stability begins and where the elements should be able to exist without any problems. And so even though before that the elements are extremely radioactive and usually decay very quickly, once they reach the atomic weight of 164, they might actually physically become stable and no longer even be radioactive. With the math behind this so far being intriguingly good. And so the main premise in this paper is that maybe these heavy elements physically exist and are physically stable in a lot of different places out there. And more importantly, maybe these super heavy elements are actually the reason why this unusual asteroid Polyhymnia seems to be so extremely dense. And so instead of dark matter in this case, they actually propose regular matter, but like hypothetical super heavy matter that we just haven't been able to produce on planet Earth, but in this case could be hiding inside this asteroid. Here they essentially extrapolate the overall density versus atomic number and discover that one of these weird super heavy elements, in theory, could explain the density we're observing. With the elements of atomic number 164, potentially having a density of 36 to maybe 68 grams per centimeter cube. So not exactly the same as this asteroid, but very close to it. And so here the idea is that maybe there are actually a lot of these asteroids out there with extremely high densities simply because they contain a lot of super heavy elements on the inside, which increases their mass and their density overall. And the fact that this is right here in the solar system and could potentially be obtained after all, obtaining this unobtainium would obviously present a very exciting opportunity. Although here it's most likely some kind of a combination of different elements potentially forming minerals containing these super heavy elements. And so whatever the answer is in this case, it's definitely super exciting. But it also means that we have to do one thing first. Someone has to once again measure the mass of this asteroid a lot more accurately, determining if the density is really that high. There is still a very high chance that all of this is based on a miscalculation, with a lot of other explanations involved in the compact ultra-dense objects, possibly having much more rudimentary explanations. Nevertheless, this whole concept of KUDO, or compact ultra-dense objects, does have quite a lot of support from a lot of other scientists, and you can actually find some of their more intriguing papers in the description below. For example, papers describing their properties, an entire series of papers describing other potential objects, and even objects outside of the solar system, and even explanations that basically go through some of the unusual craters right here on planet Earth, that some scientists believe might have been created by something much denser than a typical asteroid. And that even includes craters on Mars and Mercury. And so, yeah, all this means is that maybe, just maybe, someone should take a look at this asteroid once again, just to see what's up here. If we do actually discover heaviest elements in the solar system hiding right inside this unusual rock, everyone is going to want to have a piece of it. And for all we know, maybe this is going to finally begin that space exploration era. Maybe we discover some incredible super heavy element that everybody wants to have. Space gold rush. I mean, space kudo rush. I mean, space super heavy element rush. I don't have a good name for it yet, but that would be cool, right? Anyway, on that note, still a very hypothetical proposition, but something maybe super exciting, assuming they're correct. So yeah, someone out there, please take a look at Polyhymnia once again, just so that we can maybe get some closure here. We'll come back and talk more about this once there are some updates. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.